Okay, so welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a recap of The Protector, epi Season 1, Episode 2. So, this episode is a little bit shorter um, than the pre the first episode. The first episode is probably like 45 minutes. This episode is like 32 minutes. So, we're going to get to this as quickly as possible. So, it opens with the doctor, I guess the pharmacist, going into the backstory of how The Protector came to be. And, of course, as a lot of these stories go... Um, there were these men, they were called the Seven Immortals, who wanted to destroy in, um, Istanbul and destroy the world and take over the world and the whole thing. So, of course, humanity couldn't let that happen, and so they created this person, this figure called the Protector. And they endowed him with certain abilities. So, there's the, the ring, the dagger, and of course the shirt that Hakan already has. So, at this point, we haven't seen the ring or the dagger. So, um... As this man is telling the story, of course, it's done in a flashback, uh, you know, during that time when it, when all of these things were created. And so, in present day, so we flash the present day, and he's, just, you know, talking to him, telling him the story, and Hakan is sitting there looking like he is about to fucking die. He's sweating, he looks like he has a goddamn flu, he's throwing up in a bucket because his body is still adjusting to um, the armor. Uh, so... Uh, he's eventually, he's like, you know, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Y'all all crazy. That's some bullshit. I just, he just was not, he, it just was not sinking in. And so, of course, the nep, the nep, I guess, is the pharmacist's daughter. She has very little patience for this because she's, I mean, she grew up knowing about this stuff. Hakan has basically only had like a day, we're assuming a, a day, to kind of, um, to take all of this in, and in the process, his, you know, he's dealing with the uh, grieving his father. So he's just like, this is some bullshit. And then, of course, his friend is still missing. Nemo is still missing. So he's just like, I just, no. So she is just basically like, you know what? Maybe I should shoot him in the head again. And this time without the shirt, he's talking to his father. He's talking to her father. Her father's like, just, okay. So eventually he has to be left alone with his dad because he wanted to say his goodbyes. Uh, he asked what they were going to do with his father, and of course the, the the pharmacist told him that they would take care of the burial. But he wanted to be left alone with them because they didn't part on the best terms. If you remember in the first episode, they got into he they got into an argument, and he ended up telling his father that you're not my father, and he storms out, and it was just this whole thing. And so, unfortunately, you know we don't always get do-overs so you know you don't always get an opportunity to right your wrongs or get you know get things straight squared away before someone passes and so he's now dealing with the guilt of you know that last discussed argument they had and you know he's still concerned about Nemo and around this time you had the pharmacist and his doctor to have a side conversation and he's she's basically like he needs you basically to get his head to game he needs to get prepared da, da, da. and the father was like well yeah and you need to train him and she was like he's she really just sees him as weak and she she just don't really have any a whole lot of faith in him right now because you know he's just like I said, she just doesn't have any patience. He basically, and the father's basically telling her, you know, he's been through a lot. He's going through a lot. You know, we need to give him the time that, give him time in order to come to terms with what's going on and um, to help him find his way. And I mean, that's basically our job. So, um, around this time... Uh, Erdine and Layla, his the secretary who basically told uh, Hakan, like, you know, um, yeah, you. This isn't this, you know, this company probably isn't the right fit for you. You need to find something that's more suitable to your skills and your talents. And all, it's all basically what she was like, we, we don't have shit for you. You get the fuck out, basically, when you apply for that job. So they're, uh, they're sitting, Layla and Erdine are sitting down now playing chess. And he starts asking about Mazar. And um, if you flatten this flashback a little bit, go back a little bit. So Mazar, around this time, Mazar is, um, he just called Techie. Now Techie, I guess, is the leader of this ragtag gr gr uh, gang that has Nemo, that's been fucking Nemo up, trying to get information out of him that Nemo really doesn't have. And so he tells, uh, Techie tells Mazar that, you know, we've basically done all we can. If he knew, if he knew anything at this point, he would have told us. And so, he's like, so what do you want us to do? And Mazar was like, well, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, basically we've done all we can do. Um, so how am I going to how am I going to receive payment? Do you, Are you going to come here? Do you want me to come to your house? <clears throat> and that's when we find out Mazar tells him that Susan is still alive. And so they need to get to her before she starts talking. And, da, da, da. 
And so, Mazar basically said, just find the guy, find Hakan, and he'll deal with um, Susan. So, we flash to, now we flash to um, Erdine and Layla, and they're sitting playing chess, and Erdine asks uh, Layla about Mazar, like, have you seen him today? And she was like, well, I think he went to the shipyard. And so Ardina's is kind of looking confused. He's like, "Well, why did he go there?" She was like, "Well, nobody over here really knows what he does, so you know, like I don't like I don't really know." And so you can see him look on his face, like, "What is he? What's going on with him?" And so he ends up asking uh, her about uh, Hakan because he wants to offer Hakan the job, and of course, Leda still feels like he's not suitable for the company. And so she basically um, he asked her, "Did you reach out to him?" And she basically said, well, I haven't because I just don't think that he's the right for the job. And he kind of like reared back in his seat and was like, okay, bitch, I told you to contact him and I want him to come in. And I don't really give a damn what you think about it. I mean, he didn't say it like that, but that, I mean, that was basically his attitude. I want him in my office tonight. And so she kind of sat there looked with the stuck face like, oh, okay, so I really need to make this happen. So, yeah. Um... So, um, around this time, Zine uh, Zineb, she's going to take Hakan a drink and realize that he's left. So now he's, has, he's on the hunt to find Nem uh, Nemo. So now she's there. Okay, so now she has to find him. Um, and then, so you see Hakan, he's going to his building. He's, and before he gets to his building, he sees the guy, Techie, and his little group standing out in front of the building. And then above, he saw a woman in the window kind of waving him, like, around, just come, you know, come around. So he walks around, and then next, you know, he's in the apartment, and he called her Auntie Kamaran? Kamaran? I am so sorry if I'm butchering these names. You, you know, I just... I'm sorry. And so she's basically like, what the hell is going on? You got the police over here asking a bunch of questions. People are looking for you. And da, 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 da. And he's basically asked her um, if he, she's seen Nemo. And she was like, I haven't seen him since yesterday. And what are you guys? Are you guys in trouble? What is going on? Da, da, da. And so he's there for a minute. He really hasn't, hasn't said, given her much information. Because at, at, at this point, he doesn't really know what the hell's going on either. And so he basically tells her when he finds out something, he'll let her know. And he leaves. And so he ends up going to his father's house. And so while he's at his father's house, he, you know, he finds this lockbox. And this lockbox has, uh, he finds this photo. And the photo is, uh, I'm assuming the father, but I think his name is Nisette, the, the one who died. And his, uh, a guy named Marat and the pharmacist, which I still haven't figured out his name. And so, um, next thing you know, he hears the door, uh, the door opening and it's, Zanep. So she finds him and basically he's like, we, you need to go back. We need to get you trained. You are not basically prepared to go out and do anything. And he's like, no, he needs to find Nemo. And he just wasn't, he, he just wasn't going. And so I guess she agreed to help him. She, luckily she brought the shirt, gave him the shirt. And um, now they're on the hunt for to find Nemo. So no, actually backtrack a little bit. Oof. Okay, so um what you, uh, they flash to the guys, you know, Nemo is basically at this point unconscious, oh, at this point, I don't even know if he's dead, if he's dead, but a guy found, they found his cell phone, so he ends up, uh, he gets, so they send Nemo, uh, a kind of text, and so, um, I guess telling them that he wants to meet up, and so, that's when the, uh, Zanep shows up at the house and the whole thing, and now they try, they're going to meet up at the meetup spot. Zanep kind of knows that this, something's not right. Like, if it's if it's really him, why don't he just come here? Why do you have to go out to meet him? Da, da, da. But she's going along with Hakan. He, he, he's not at the point where he's really to hear, hear any, um, any sensible, take any sensible advice. So she's going with him, just, you know, just to help. And so around this time, the farmer says he goes to the hospital. Um, because he wants to, uh, I don't know if he's going to talk to Susan or get her out of the hospital to protect her or whatever, give whatever information he can. But, unfortunately, Mazar is there at the same time. He sets off the fire alarm, so there's this, obviously, he's planning to get out of the hospital. And he gets to her, uh, Susan before the pharmacist can and ends up killing her. So now, Susan is dead. Okay. So, um... So, Zanep and Hakan, they're now in a cab or something. They're going to go into the meetup place. And around this time, Layla finally gets in contact with him to offer him this job. And he's like, well, what's changed? And um, she goes into her whole thing. Um, 
And he eventually says he can't, you know, he's not looking for a job anymore. And she's like, wait a minute, I thought this was your dream. What about dreams? Da, 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 da. And he basically told her dreams changed. And he hung, up, he hung up on her ass. So now she's sitting there like, oh, shit. So now I'm going to go and tell this man that he's not going to come. He's not going, he's not going to be here. So they um, arrive. It looks like they're at a park. So they arrive at this park and he sees Nemo. And of course, without thinking, he's rush. He rushes in. She tried, uh, Danette tried to stop him. But of course he, he ran over to get ne uh, to, to Nemo. And of course, at this point he realized that Nemo was dead. But he's now in the line of fire. So now you hear shots ringing out and he gets hit a couple of times. She runs over, grabs him and they make a run for it. So of course now he's all, he's upset because his father is dead. Now his best friend is dead. And now it's just like his whole world is even, I guess more out of whack. So while they're making a run for it, the guy who Techie, Techie was the one who did, took the shots. And <clears throat> he goes down to where Nemo is and he sees the smashed uh, bullet on the ground. And he's like, wait a minute. He, he's looking confused like, I know I hit this man. Um, so why is this bullet here all damaged on the ground? So now, he's, now he has questions. And so um, he, you know, they get a, a ways away and he starts, he's, gets um, really emotional obviously because his friend and she's trying to help get him to, to keep it together long enough for them to get out of there so they get back to the shop and he's now um and he's now uh he's starts asking the pharmacist about the photo he found a, the photo of the three people in the lockbox and he basically was like he basically let him know that Marat was his is his biological father I believe and that he was the last protector and so he's going into all this information. Um, around this time, Techie is going into Mazar's office, or whatever that little meetup spot is, and he's asking him, "Okay, what the hell are we up against? What what's going on here?" And he showed him the smashed bullet. He was like, "I'm a good shot. I know I hit this man in the head, and these bullets just bounced off to him. Like if he if he was wearing a bulletproof vest, then the bullets would have been got stuck in the vest. They wouldn't have bounced off him. What is going on?" And so now Mazar's sitting there like. Like he, I mean, what, what, what can he say? So now he's also he's thinking like, okay, so he has the shirt and he, he Mazar knows what's going on, but of course the guy's still sitting there like, what the, what, 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 what have you gotten me into? What is this? And so, um, you know, they start talking about you know the they go back to the shop and they're still telling him about the immortals and how there's still one left and they're in the city and the only person that has seen them is your father but of course he's dead and like they don't know who this person is yet they don't know who this uh this last immortal um immortal is and um they didn't got uh Hakan is all riled up. He's like, he's ready to fight. He's ready to do battle. Like, you know, they've killed my father. They've killed my friends. I, you know, he's upset. He's like, I wish they would have, you would, they, my father would have told me, and they would have told me sooner because I could have protected him and Nemo. And he's just ready to fight. And so now they're like, okay, now we got, you know, he's ready to get shit done. And so now they're ready to start the training. That's basically how this episode ended. So, yeah, it's, um, uh, still a good show. Um, I'm still, Try, I'm reviewing so many shows at, at this time, so it's hard for me to upload to keep up to date. But I'm gonna try to uh, try to get up an episode, a, a recap every week. So yeah, that's how this episode ended, and yeah, I'm gonna uh, end this here, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Actually, no, I should. I got to backtrack a little, a little bit because there was a point where Mazar and Layla passed each other in the hallway at work, and she asked him about why was he at the shipyard, and she didn't know how she didn't know that that was part of his job, and he basically turned to her and was like, "Bitch, I, there's a lot of things that, that I do around here that you don't know about. Don't question me. Stick to what you do. Mind your fucking business." And that, I mean, he didn't say it that way. That's just my take. That's my interpretation, my translation of it. But that was basically it. And she kind of, he walked away and she kind of stood there like, mm, okay. So everybody, so you got uh, Layla and Erdine side eye and Mizar like, what is he doing? What's he really up to? So yeah, so I'm going to end this here and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.